We're joined today on RailerCulture.com by Drew Lerner with Worldwide Weather Inc. based out of uh, Kansas. Welcome today, Drew. Well, thank you for inviting me. Okay, Drew, last time we talked, it was uh, back in early January. Um, unfortunately, you were very, very correct in some of your predictions. Uh, Western Canada looks like it is very much in line to get that late spring you had predicted. Is this going to turn around? Well, it, it, that's that's the big question. I, I think that it will turn around, but it's going to be a slow turn, if you will. Uh, and I'm not convinced that we're going to just all of a sudden, you know, lose all the moisture abundance. But uh, but I do think we're going to mo- move in the right direction. Uh, I, I, at this point, I think there's going to uh, definitely be a continuation of the kind of pattern we're in right now uh, for at least another few more weeks. Uh, the May is going to continue to do battle on these air masses. Uh, we'll probably have a little bit of a cooler bias that's going to be prevailing. Uh, and what's interesting about May is that we're going to get some warmer air up here. It's not just going to be, you know, one steady uh, diet of coolness. Uh, but the problem is, is as we warm the atmosphere, it'll start at re- retaining greater amounts of moisture. And then, unfortunately, because we still have the same uh, basic uh, uh, environment where we have cool air masses still slated to come down from the north. But when those cool air masses come into this warm and moist air mass, we, we will have in place for a little while. And we're going to create more rain. So the only thing that's going to be different is that we will have gotten rid of most of our snow by that point in time. And it'll be a little bit less of a problem every time it rains because we obviously won't have the runoff to deal with at the same time that we're dealing with the rain uh, that will be falling. But unfortunately, uh, because of the way things are set up, uh, the combination of some cool weather periodically and these storm systems that will come along as well, uh, it's going to be a very slow go. And frustration is going to be uh, definitely in control of all of our minds. It's going to be a difficult time, and and we're just going to have to be patient. We'll get a break. Uh, but as I told everyone in January, make sure you don't wait for the optimum conditions to come around because they just may not be there as long as you want them to be, and we just need to jump on it you know, as quickly as we can. So when we do switch to what we would call spring, um, are we going to stay there, or can we expect this cool weather to, to sort of continue and linger into uh, the early summer months? Well, I think a little bit of both, actually. I think the Canadian prairies are actually in a better position to see temperatures a little bit closer to normal than uh, those of us down here in the States. Uh, And the reason why I say that is because the jet stream is going to be a little bit on the split side, and and some of the... uh, greatest amount of energy in the atmosphere is actually going to be down in the states and and because of that uh, the cooler the coolest bias relative to normal is likely to be down in those areas uh, whereas uh, the northern and central parts of the prairies will see something much closer to normal and as we get into the late July and August time period I think we'll have a short-term bout of some nice warmer weather uh, but because we have so much moisture out there in the air and in the ground, it's going to be really difficult for us to heat up uh, in the sense that we all think in the back of our minds, you know, where we get temperatures in the 30s in the summertime. We may get that, but we're probably not going to be there for very long. Well, and this is, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I was talking to some farmers this morning and we were talking, you know, we, we just don't need heat. The reality is with the amount of moisture that we have around, on top of the soil and obviously the saturation of the soil, we need wind. So how easily is it to predict that wind? Like, do we have a chance, opportunity here to get some wind? We do have a good chance for getting some wind. Unfortunately, you have to wait a little bit longer for that, though, because the jet stream is so far to the south, and the storm track is to the south, and that means that it's gonna, it, the, uh, the, the greatest winds are going to be blowing across the northern plains of the U.S. more than they will be the prairies, at least for a while. When the jet stream starts to relax back to the north again as we move closer to a, a true spring, uh, then we can start looking for some wind. Because we're going to see these great contrasts in air mass uh, temperatures as time moves forward and that's exactly what you need uh, in order to generate wind the sad thing about that though is if you generate a lot of wind you're probably going to be bringing a lot of warmth and moisture northward and some coolness southward and the two going to meet somewhere and someone's going to get a bunch of rain Mm. so when do we hit this point uh the point where we can kind of say spring has arrived is there going to be a flick of the switch a little bit or is this a slow change I think it's going to be a slow change, and we're going to have 
uh, oh, maybe a week to 10 days where we all of a sudden go, wow, this is it. You know, this is, we finally made it, you know, and, and I think where well, it's just going to be a week or so later and it's going to be raining and cold again. And uh, very, that's why I say it's going to be a frustrating season. I, I think I feel very strongly about that, especially in the month of May and maybe even early weeks of June. And, and uh, I think that we'll get to the point where we finally are into the warmth and we stay there. Uh, but that's probably going to be uh, late May, early June before we, you know, get to that point. Uh, before I move on to summer, is there more? Is there more moisture to come this spring then? Oh, definitely. Uh, it's not going to be just a really wet, wet spring uh, in that sense. But because our temperatures are cooler than normal at times, it's going to be difficult to get rid of the moisture. And uh, because of the fact that we have so much moisture out there in some areas anyway, uh, that makes it even more difficult to get rid of it, obviously, if our temperatures are cool. So uh, I don't think the precipitation amounts are going to be tremendously above average. But because the temperatures are below average more often than not, it's going to, be, uh, it's going to make it look a lot worse than it would be otherwise. So what, what, what is your analysis saying about the summer that we're going to have? Well, I think we'll have a good summer in, in some respects. Now, the, by good summer, I mean for those who are able to get their crops in the ground in a relatively reasonable, you know, close to normal time, which is going to be a fairly small percentage of the, of the group out there, I'm afraid. Uh, but for those who do manage to do that, I think once we get into Ju June and July and August, I think we're going to have a good mix of uh, warmth and, and precipitation, and the crops will do very well. The biggest problem that we'll have for those producers will be uh, fighting the, uh, the weeds and, and the disease uh, because of the moisture. Uh, it'll be difficult to get out and spray some of these fields sometimes because we're still going to have showers and thunderstorms coming fairly often. So it'll be a kind of a race against nature there. Uh, for those who are going to have to wait to plant until we get into uh, late May and early June, uh, that's going to be a little bit more of a potential problem because there will be some drier and warmer weather there, but again, it's going to still shower and thunderstorm periodically. So some of those crops are going to end up with some short roots. And, and so it might be a little bit more potentially uh, threatening if we do manage to get into a period of warm and dry weather. And if we get there too quickly, you know, some of those crops will take a, a, second, uh, uh, a second hit because it, it gets too dry quickly or something like that. Now, I don't see us seeing any prolonged period of dryness. But anytime you, you wait real late to put the crop in the ground, you're going to develop and you keep the temperatures cool. You're going to have short roots. And uh, so these crops will be at least vulnerable to some other issues later in the season. And then, of course, the other issue is uh, whether or not we're going to see cold weather in the autumn earlier than usual. And, and that's something we just don't know yet. But there's still an awful lot of potential threats for all of us out there this season. And I think everyone's aware of it, which is uh, the, the primary reason why we're all on edge right now. At this point, are you sick of being right? <laughs> 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 well, you know, I, uh, I, I love all my customers, and I love uh, everybody that I speak with and I'm and with, and, and um, my heart goes out to everyone who is in the farming business because it is so tough sometimes. And, um, you know, as far as being right, I, I don't know that I'm right that often, but you're kind to say that. Uh, but uh, sometimes you care more about those you're trying to forecast the weather for than, than you do the forecast itself. And, and it's kind of frustrating because I, I know uh, how bad some areas are out there right now. And some of the very same places that were hurt last year uh, with too much moisture are in the very same areas that are going to have the biggest problem this year possibly. And, you know, that's really frustrating. And, and I don't want to be right uh, in that sense. I would love for it to get hot and dry. And so who knows? Maybe... Uh, Maybe that'll come our way.